Hello, I'm Ana Wiltos, and welcome to another episode of uh, Behind the Scenes on the Quarantine Stories. And today with me, I have uh, one of the people working on the project. Jorge, please uh, introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Jorge Zore. I'm actually one of the narrators for our uh, Quarantine Stories. Uh, and yeah, I mean, this, uh, I'm actually a voice actor, a, narr uh, a narrator. And I actually am starting off this project, so I don't know what else to say about this. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, so how, how did you get on board on this project? Honestly, I have no idea. Just Hunter uh, DM'd me one day saying, hey, so I got a project for you. And me being desperate for voiceover work, I said, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, why are you desperate for voiceover work, particularly? Because, all right, so I actually uh, I actually do want to do voiceover work. It's actually been one of my passions for a long time. And, yeah, I've been able to get some gigs here and there. But I, I want to be part of something bigger. I just want to, like, I want to, uh, I feel like I could do a little, like, I could do more. And with me being a part of the quarantine stories, I could actually, you know, just show off my my talent. I mean, I could actually show off my, my, uh, how do you say it? My narration. I could show off my voices. Yeah, I could range. Like, it, yeah, my, exactly. My range. I could show off my range. I could actually be, you know, just showing off where I could, where I stand and where I, and where I could actually position myself in instead of like, because. Yeah. Work as part those, of a team. Uh, yes, really get stuff exactly, done. Work, it actually get and not only this, but and good practice the, too. Yeah, like I've always been a solo worker. I, I, a worker. I've never had anybody like help me out. Like, okay, this is what you got to do with this and this and that. Except for the people who tell me, okay, this is the lines. So, uh, here's how you have to do it. Here's here's your character. Go and that's it. But like me being a part of quarantine stories. It actually gives me a part, uh, a chance to work as a team. It actually gets me a chance to meet new people who are actually willing to help me out, and so on and so forth. And I, and that's the thing I love about me. Uh, that's the thing I love about me working with quarantine stories. So okay. I'm actually pretty happy about that. Are there any other uh, big projects that you've worked on before? Um. Well, <laughs> I have. Uh, I am currently the voice of Thor for a stop motion series. It's actually, um, uh, I mean, the guy, he, I just uh, saw one day that, uh, someone was looking for, uh, Thor on Instagram and I just hit him up saying, Hey, so I could do a Thor. And he just said, okay, do your Chris Hemsworth, uh, kind of uh, Thor. And I just said, hello, I'm Thor, son of Odin, the God of Thunder. And he's like, oh, okay, that actually works. So yeah. I, yeah, as of right now, I'm currently the voice of Thor for that stop motion series. And people in the stop motion and figure world tell, know me as one of the voices for Thor. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's good to hear. Uh, how did you get into voice acting? Um. Okay, so this is a bit of a tricky one. Be well, not tricky, but more like it's... It's kind of complicated. All right. So originally, I wasn't going to be a voice actor. Originally, I wanted to be an artist. Um, so the thing about it is that it wasn't one of my passion projects. It wasn't one of my passions to do at first. I actually spent literally four, <laughs> four years in high school not like thinking, all right, I'm going to be an artist. I'm going to be an artist. I'm going to be an artist. And once I go to an art school, um, they tell me, oh, we can't accept you because we don't do things by hand. We do things digitally. And I'm actually more better, more, uh, you know, more uh, safer doing things by hand. And that actually crushed my dream. So I actually had to choose another profession. And I thought, well, what can I do in order to uh, not be, you know, just a one-off kind of person and i've been looking into a lot of old cartoons uh like scooby-doo mickey mouse um you know all the classics right yeah. there 
And I decided, you know what? I think I'm. I know what to do. And I've actually, uh, and one, of my, and I actually started to practice. And one of my first voices that I've actually mastered, so on, uh, so to speak, is actually Shaggy. Like Zoinks, Scooby, gotta get going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Man. that's actually pretty good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, but uh, the, I actually did uh, master some of those uh, voices, and it's, you know, there. But trust me, like, uh, if you would heard me the first time, you would have told me, yeah, this guy has no chance. <laughs> but yeah, as they say, practice makes perfect, and now I'm doing voiceover work, so I've been actually trying to find voiceover work that actually gives me some uh, help with my range. Like, so there's that. Yeah. So do you watch a lot of cartoons? I watch a lot of cartoons. Uh, yes, I do watch a lot of cartoons. I watch a lot of anime. I like watch a lot of animation. And I especially the uh the uh the ones that are never really told online. <laughs> um yeah. uh, it's not because not just because of the animation, but because of the voiceover work. And trust me, I know some good uh I know when I hear some good voiceovers, and I know when I hear some bad ones. And trust me, it's <laughs> I could actually tell where, which ones are like classics, like uh, Mickey Mouse, and which ones are bad, like uh, are bad voice acting, like the uh, incognito videos. <laughs> okay. So, uh, do you have some other interests? Something else that you do, um, perhaps a hobby? In terms of interest, uh, I think, well, I mean, I guess I could say that drawing is still one of my side of passions, but it's not really my main focus as it was like back, uh, back in 2015. So, I mean, there's that. So, not, I mean, the, I mean, drawing's not really a big passion of mine nowadays. I mean, I I focus I focus more on the voice on the voiceovers and and just doing things that I love doing now. So, which is this, actually. This. Yeah, the quarantine story. I just this is a this is my main focus now. Like, I just love doing this. Okay, so. uh... I hope uh, you get plenty of opportunities to practice your craft, to perhaps improve in various ways. Uh, how, where do you see yourself in, in the future? Where do I see myself in the future? Yeah. Um, oh, man, that's, that's, that's the big question, isn't it? Well, I always saw myself actually... Uh, being actually walking the red carp uh wa walking a red carpet but like uh like being in a part of a big motion picture like the Sonic the Hedgehog movie with like I want to be like Ben Schwartz um and and uh on other voice actors that uh that actually do voiceover roles and I think those I mean granted it is going to be take a long very long time and I know it sounds pretty ambitious, but I, that's how I see myself. I mean, I just want to be part of something bigger, be greater. Yeah. So let's let's go a bit more small picture. What's what are your hopes for the quarantine stories? <laughs> Get a lot of subscribers. That's <laughs> for one. I mean, we only have at least I think the last time I checked was seventeen subscribers. I'm hoping to reach for at least. I don't know, 100, maybe, and at the very least, 1,000. I mean, uh, that that's what I'm hoping for in for our uh, for our uh, YouTube channel. But still, I mean, uh, that I mean, that's 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 all I I, I can really say. Really, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I I hope things uh, as the producer. I hope that things certainly go well. So uh, yeah, let's let's go off track a bit here. So, uh, what's your favorite anime? My favorite anime? Yeah. Um. 
You know, this is actually a bit of a hard, uh, tough one because there's a lot of good animes out there that I watch. But my favorite one that I actually, my top favorite one that I like uh, is actually Gurren Lagann. And I say Gurren Lagann because the animation, but the fact is that I can't, I only like the first half okay. of Gurren Lagann. Why is it you only like the first the first half of yeah. Gurren Lagann? Yeah. Uh okay, so first of all, I <laughs> I think it actually shows growth. I mean, it's like all anime all shonen animes, basically the char- uh the main character who's a kid actually gets to grow up. He actually gets to be a part of something bigger. He actually gets to see what the world is like above ground and i think that's actually one of my favorite things he has a brother that's actually there for him to support him he has a he has friends that he actually meets along the way that actually support him and actually become and you know yeah, help him out development character development exactly and in the second half after his brother died well, by the way spoiler warning for those who haven't seen Gurren Lagann, um when his brother died, yeah, that I guess that could have been uh, character growth too. But at the same time, did he really need to die? I mean, I I always thought about it, and it seems so baffling. I mean, we actually head in the second half. We actually head into the future where they're all adults, and we actually get to see that some like. The wor- there's world peace and all that stuff. He actually, oh yeah, and he actually meets this chick along the way that he, uh, the, that actually falls for him and all that stuff. And like I said, putting on to the future, we actually get to see everybody, and we don't get to, s- and I feel like we don't get to see any character growth at all. I mean, there, I mean, and oh, I just. It makes me angry <laughs> okay. just thinking about it um but yeah bad guys attacked in the second half uh of the few in the of the series and they go for one final battle and next thing you know the chick who the main protagonist was crushing on fucking dies like what <laughs> like hold on a second why <laughs> like they, like i don't know i'm a sucker for good endings but this right here felt like a really bitter ending for me like in girl Logan, it, it, the second half of the series felt like a really brit- bitter ending and kind of a slap to the face really yeah so yeah, let me I'm... ask you a slightly more controversial question sub mm. or dub I'm both actually. Both. Yeah, I I mean I love sub. I re- I mean, I I really do love um, sub a lot. But at the same time, I can't really deny the people who actually voiced in dub. Uh, Sonic X is a good example because we got Mike Pollock as Doctor Eggman now, <laughs> and he actually first worked on uh, on Sonic X. So there's that. So that's why I actually do like both because. I because yeah, sub is actually the original, but at the same time, dub is where all the voice actors get to shine, you know. Yeah, and of course, sometimes there's differences in the voice direction between the various versions. Oh, yeah, um, you, I could actually be, I'm honestly able to tell. I mean, I know that. I'm thinking. Uh, uh, I'm actually gonna think of like a good example. Naruto. Um, I mean, obviously we know that he's actually pretty fucking annoying in the first part, and uh, trust me, he. I mean, he kind of is a bit annoying, but in the dub version, like, I uh, I cannot. St- Stand his voice in the dub like he i mean i get it i get what they were trying to go for he's he's a kid who's who wants to scream at the world saying hey i'm here and all that stuff but like 
it doesn't really work all that great <laughs> because it's like, okay, kid, we, we get it. Just chill out. Now that people started noticing you, you can chill out now. But no, he's still screaming at the world. It's like, ugh, nah. That's like dub for Nardo in the part. In the first half, in the first part, is actually where I say no. <laughs> yeah, but it gets better later. Uh, yeah, and she put in, in hell. Even uh, I mean, even the last and the Borto series. Well, uh, Bort, uh, Well, whenever Borto gets an uh, an English anime dub, um, at least with Naruto, he gets better because he, at least he's more toned down. Uh, but yeah, in the Japanese version, yeah, he's it's the same thing. But at the same time, it's like. I don't really get the annoyance like that I get from him in the first and eh, in like the original uh English dub. Okay. So I think this is a good place to conclude. Uh do you have any final remarks? Um well, I mean, if you guys want to contact me, you could always find me at Jazor Voices over at Instagram and it, I don't have any videos on my YouTube channel, but I actually do have a YouTube channel called uh, uh, Horizor Does Voices. I don't have any videos posted as like I said, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to get uh I'll be with this team I'll have someone be my video editor so I can make so I can start making videos. Okay. So anyway, uh just so that everyone knows, I will be linking your Instagram in the description below. So feel free to visit that. I will also be linking uh, the Quarantine Stories channel. So feel free to subscribe to that as well. Subscribe to me if you enjoyed my style of interview or if you enjoy my other content that I make. But anyway, thank you all for watching and I'll be seeing you all next time. It's been great having you. Thank I you, thank you, thank you. Over and out.